Another day of Jaguars training camp. Today was the second padded practice. Let me tell you, they looked really good out there, both offense and defense. We were live tweeting during 7-on-7 seven seven and 11-on-11 11 11 drills. I think a lot of the younger guys, when's fighting for a roster spot, they had a really good day. Elijah Cooks being mm -hmm. one of them. He had some really nice snags ready to jump in the air. He's like seven feet tall already, but he was jumping all over people, catching these deep passes. So he had a really good day. Travis Etienne, the running back, think had a really good day. Trevor Lawrence, I don't think he threw literally one incomplete pass, I believe. Um, maybe one or two dropped passes for some of the receivers, but all in all, I thought it was a good day for Jaguars. Seems like it, it seems like the offense, when the pads came on, boom, yeah. they've actually turned it on. So the first week of camp, it was defense, 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 and how offense felt like it regressed. But man, the offense, when the pads have come on, Tank Bigby mm -hmm. ran strong yesterday, Elijah Cook, some of those bottom of the roster guys who are gonna play a lot of special teams, really standing out. Seth Williams yeah. has played well, Elijah Cooks with a nice touchdown catch today. A lot of those guys, and again, the mainstay guys are, are playing well but we're yeah. looking for those guys we're going to see a lot of in the preseason the elijah cooks the maybe the tanks the dearness johnson's the keelan john right. those kind of guys performing well and i think it has been a good camp for a lot of those guys yeah 100 percent. you heard from press taylor this morning he was talking about those wide receivers you know later in the depth chart they're fighting for a roster spot partly maybe they can get on their roster with on special teams but you know maybe they can you know get another wide receiver spot um on the 53 man roster but you know those are kind of the guys that we're starting to look at because we know that you know the typical guys right. trevor and christian gabe btj all of them they're going to get you know they're obviously already shooting for the roster but now it's it feels like the competition is heating yeah. up one week out from or a little over one week out from the first preseason game when those younger guys are really trying mm -hmm. to you know kind of convince the coaching staff yeah. that they deserve to play come September. Yeah, in preseason games, hey, we all hate them. We hate watching them and covering yeah. them. It's, <laughs> it's games that don't count. Maybe we'll get rid of those when an 18-game schedule comes along. But it is really good. It, it's an opportunity like a Tim Jones to make the roster like yeah. he did a couple years ago with a great final stretch in the preseason. And we're going to see a lot of these guys – touched on it yesterday this roster goes from 90 to 53 in one fell swoop and there's no staged cuts anymore so these preseason games are important that's why practices when you see elijah cooks making a huge grab when you see seth williams turning it on and, and turning in day after day after day of, of big catches those are great to see those catches and performances they're going to have to make their mark on special teams talk to elijah cooks today and he prefaced the, making the team with special teams knows he's going to have to contribute on there he had three catches last year contributed in just about every game on special teams so it is imperative that these guys play good in, in the new kickoff situations the returning punt situations the tackles on special teams and gunners it is very very important that those guys do it because that's how they're that's how they're going to make the roster press talked about it today yep. elijah cooks talked about it a few minutes ago when i spoke with him so it is important that's going to be watching those preseason games yeah so let's talk about the defense now they had a good day a few pass breakups for the defense um you know it's nice to see the pads coming on the defensive linemen really mm -hmm. getting into their own a little more aggressive from all of them back there so um, yeah, I like I like what we see from the defense, but like you said, the offense definitely taking a step from yes. last week. Of course, a difference with the pads, but you can see more of that physicality that Ryan Nielsen wants to bring. Yeah, and it's defense first few days of camp really had the offense's number. You're asking, man, what is wrong with the offense? This <laughs> continuation from last year. The players say, hey, we're not reading into it. We're running plays last year that may not have worked. We're trying to see if they work this year. So. Defense front part of camp. It'll be interesting to see on the Saturday the the stadium practice yeah. what these guys look like in there. Bigger going to be a bigger crowd and probably more of a not necessarily a workout type situation. So I think we'll see a little bit more from uh, from the team on Saturday inside Everbank Stadium. But man, it's getting close to preseason game one. We're going to get joint practices down here in a couple weeks. So that'll be cool to see that. Patrick Mahomes and company come to town August 10th. So it is right around the corner. I can't believe it. I can't yeah. believe it. The off day tomorrow for the Jaguars. Yeah. High school football media day over at Everbank Stadium. And then they get back into gear on Friday and then return to Everbank Stadium with that uh, that uh, full practice on Saturday. So, maybe we are flying right along. Who's been kind of your camp standouts so far? Ooh. Maybe one on the offensive defensive side. Um, let me think. Are we going with, like, I mean, Gabe Davis for the offense, new guy. I think he's doing a really, really good job. Obviously, more of a veteran. Um, I don't want to pick like the usual guys. I think on defense, let me think. I really like, they were talking about Foyer Lucan 
yesterday, mm -hmm. Brian Nielsen was asked about his three. Um, I'm sorry, I got a text. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boy, I'm, trying to, I'm, trying to him, I'm trying to think. Yeah, away from I, know, the newcomers. I know. I'm going to say Seth Williams one. for me on the offensive side. That's I, a good I one. I love how he's played. He's a big body receiver. Uh, he caught a couple touchdown passes last week um, in the camp. Mason uh, Smith for me. Mason Smith played. Mason yeah. Smith. I like Mason Smith. It's tough to, it's tough to pick those defensive and offensive line guys because you don't see them enough. Yeah. Um, when they're doing one-on-ones, they're usually inside here, and, and we're not watching them. So it would be easier to see, I think, in, in a more of a – game-like situation or in those joint practices, those offensive, defensive line. But to me, I yeah. think offensively, I, I've liked Seth Williams. Mm. Uh, he's a he's an undrafted guy, could make the roster, going to be special teams, kind of like Elijah Cooks, but I like him on defense. And then Antonio Johnson, I, I like him. He's projected as a starter, so he's maybe a little bit under the under the, the realm. I, I like Antonio Johnson. I think he's going Ooh, to be a starter. I may go with Jarian Jones, too. Let's just throw them all out there. <laughs> Jarian Jones, Parker Washington has had a good camp. Tink yeah. Bigsby has definitely taken the next step. Yes. I talked to him yesterday, I believe. I really like what he probably will bring to this season. He's really excited for to show a better performance Tank this look, season. Tank has he's looked great. Cool. He has he's looked running good. through those tackles. He's being aggressive. He's holding on to that ball, which, of course, we all want. But, yeah, I think those are maybe not one or two, but those are, like, 50 guys that we all yeah, we like. Yeah, and we I can know. mention the, the big-name guys. But I, looking but, at the, the yeah. roster, and you're, you're talking probably roster spots, 49 through 53. I'm and, really liking uh, Elijah Cooks. Yeah, Elijah Cooks, too. I mean, he's a guy who's got that size. He's yeah. 6'4", played in NFL games last year, played in a bunch of NFL games last year, had three catches. He said uh, his welcome to the NFL moment last year was when Trevor's pass to him, his first target, went right off his hands in the Ravens game. So that was my welcome to the NFL moments. I thought that was interesting to, uh, to do that. So we're going to be watching a lot of those bottom of the roster guys yeah. who will make it as core special teamers and then kind of fill in here and there on the uh, the special team side. Who do you think is going to be the starting quarterback? Oh, man, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. That is a tough one. Uh, interesting to see the the backup, the three quarterbacks. Yeah. In any other year, you know, we had the conversation last year with Nathan Rourke. Is he going to be a third quarterback? No. They didn't keep him. Obviously, they practice squatted him, and then he moved along. They're going to keep two quarterbacks, I think. My colleague, Jamal St. Cyr, says he, he thinks they're going to keep three. I do think they keep two. They probably keep Mac as uh, Trevor's backup. Well, CJ's still been running with the number twos quite a bit. Uh, they're going to keep Mac as a backup. Try and stash CJ on practice squad is my opinion on this. I Jamal and I that. are a little bit uh, split on that. I don't think Mac uh, – well, they did Mac a little dirty in the uh, Madden EA sports game. Give him a 69 rating. That, that's coming out here soon. But 69 rating for Mac Jones, former first-round pick. Wow. Dang. He's going to be number two quarterback, though, I think. Do you want to tell us more about how you feel about a 69 rating? <laughs> that's terrible. How, how do you get – uh, very low for that. Elijah Cook said they did they did him dirty too, a 65 on his Madden rating. What did your was do? What would be your Madden rating? If there was a negative, I'd be a zero. I'm not doing all that work. If there would be a zero, a negative rating, that would be <laughs> that, that's be where I would fall. <laughs> that's good. Okay, well I think we're done with this conversation, Justin. <laughs> Uh, I'm all such a proper interest in <laughs> We're That's about it. That's, that's yeah. the News for Jacks podcast. We'll have full coverage of today's training camp on newsforjacks.com and on all of the late shows, 6, 30, 10, 11, so make sure you tune in or watch. Yeah, we're off again. tomorrow. Remember High School Football Media school Day? Football, yeah. We're back on Friday with uh, Teal the Show, Alessandra and Frank Frangie coming to you at 1120 on Friday night.